Good day folks. So today's video is going to look at a rather odd proposal from Alvis for an export Saladin mounting a Raden autocannon in a CVRT turret. This vehicle does not crop up in the usual books on Saladin and has today, like so much, been forgotten about. This is the story of the Saladin R. The Saladin R, or Raden, was developed on the famous FV600 series of hulls that entered service shortly after the end of World War II. With early drawings and models completed in 1947, mounting the Pipsqueak gun, a high velocity two pounder weapon. This gun offered a very high velocity 40mm round, able to perforate 85mm of armour at 60 degrees at 900 metres or near 170 mm vertical at the same range, which was exceptional for its time, and, unlike the older Little John squeeze bore adapters, enabled it to still fire high explosive rounds if needed. Ultimately, this weapon was not put into production, as the War Office felt that a larger but lower velocity high explosive round in the form of the 76 mm was more desirable, firing Hesh rounds which would still enable the vehicle to tackle the threats that it might face. The Saladin would go on to serve with the UK until the arrival of the Scorpion, and was an export success for the UK and many other nations, and can still be found in service sporadically. The rugged little vehicle was also widely adaptable, and several variants and concepts came up, from a Saladin mounting the ubiquitous swingfire missiles, to early infrared lights, and even a 90mm gun as a private venture, all of which would never see any real export success in their own rights, as most users were happy with what they had. But the lack of requirement or need for an upgrade has never slowed down British defence, who have a firm grasp on producing the unneeded. And so, they decided to design a new export vehicle this time, mounting a 30mm Raden gun into a modified FV-107 Scimitar turret for export to the Middle East with Q8 being the primary target. The turret differs slightly and is an all aluminium construction with a single Raden gun mounted centrally, a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun to one side and a day-night sight mounted on the other side. The gun came with 189 30mm rounds in Clipsa 3, consisting of Hispano Sousa 831L ammunition. This included high explosive incendiary rounds, armor piercing explosive, and armor piercing solid shot, all with tracer, while a new APDS round was also listed for use. The turret was fully traversable, with plus 40 degrees of elevation and minus 10 degrees of depression, but remained hand operated, and in a pinch, the turret was able to be operated by a single crewman. The Raden gun could either fire single shot or bursts of three to six rounds, if needed, and while lacking the firepower of truly automatic weapons, it was also simple and easy to operate, and was remarkably accurate out to long ranges. And while it's not able to tackle tanks head on, its role was to eliminate softer vehicles, provide fire support, and engage helicopters. The hull itself was more or less unchanged, with six 12 by 20 RF track grip tyres with hydraulically power assisted points on the first four. Primary power was provided by a Rolls Royce B80 eight cylinder engine, delivering 160 brake horsepower at 3750 revs, coupled to a Daimler five speed fluid coupling gearbox. This gave the vehicle a top speed of 45 miles per hour, or 72 kilometres an hour in either direction, with a road range of just 100 miles. The vehicle weighed 10.2 tonnes and could ford three foot of water unprepared or with preparation be able to swim at 2.5 miles an hour. Alvis listed the roles and tasks that the Salinar was designed to fulfil. These included reconnaissance, advance to combat, battle reporting, surveillance and rapid forward recce, as well as delaying and withdrawal, along with anti-helicopter and airborne operations, raiding, exploiting roles and counter-smuggling duties. Despite this, no orders were placed, 
And apart from a well-made brochure showing the vehicle's general statistics, as well as some colour images, none were put into production. It's not known how many, if any, were ever built. Alves was usually pretty good at having working concepts ready, should a client wish to see more. And it is possible one was ready, as the components needed were not outside their remit, having essentially all the parts ready to go. Today nothing remains of this project, other than the brochure and a few fragments of text pieces. But it could be a nice project for model makers, where it takes it from a what-if concept to an actually proposed model. Well guys, I hope that tickled your fancy. There isn't a lot more on this vehicle, and hopefully it'll be of interest to some who like the weird wheeled projects. But until next time, toodle pip.